fact that I am filming a video with my hair up is like purely shocking. I never wear my hair up. I never know how to start videos. I'm just like, oh my God, I feel so awkward. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Deez. Cheers, Louise. The girl doesn't know how to do an introduction anymore. Oh. Hi. So for ages, I've said that I want to do a little like YouTube series slash set of youtube videos around like mental health and being open and things like that my youtube and my blog used to be pretty much just like diaries for me so these videos are pretty much just going to be like talking about different mental health topics talking about different like mental health conditions different like people's mental health journeys and me just being very open and telling you all what's wrong with me which is how i'm gonna start this first one when it comes to talking about my problems when I have to tell my friends I can't do it because I'm like oh my god no like I can't get the words out but when I'm talking to a camera I can <laughs> so this first video is literally just gonna be me talking about how I've been feeling recently because some people might be able to relate to different things that I've been feeling and I like promoting like being open and honest and trying to get people to like realize the importance of talking about how they feel so i've been off work for a couple of weeks now with my mental health which this is the first time this has happened in my entire life like i've always had mental health struggles and i've spoken about them before and i'll speak about them again it's always been something ever since i was like 12 13 i'm now almost 28 it has been a struggle for me um but i've never not been able to work because of them this is definitely a whole new avenue for me and trying to be open about it is very scary. If I'm being honest, and I can't believe I'm saying this online, I had to give my meds, well some of my meds anyway, my nighttime sleepy migraine meds to my mum because there's been some nights where I have just been in such a state that I've debated overdosing on them. I'd been playing games with my friends, you know, I'd been fine and I have to leave the call. And I go into my room and I cry and I've wanted to take them. I've just thought like everyone would be better off without me. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say that out loud actually. Um, very few people know that. And it's not something that I want to admit to most of my friends because I know that they wouldn't approve and I don't want them to worry about me. So I made the conscious decision to give my meds to my mum where she only brings me like a certain amount at a time so that I can't overdose on them. Or if I did, it wouldn't be lethal because I'd have such a like a sh small amount of medication that it wouldn't really do too much. And even saying that, that's still something that I can't believe that I've got into again. I stopped self-harming for about five years. Last year, I did it again. Uh, twice, I think. And then this year, I did it a couple more times as well. And it's not something that I'm proud of, and it's something that I'm embarrassed of. I was going to be getting a tattoo on my arm, like here, and it was going to be like a lightsaber. But I can't get that now because I relapsed and I did things I'm not proud of. I'm not saying this for attention because I don't need it. it if anything, sometimes it actually makes me feel worse because then I feel so bad about feeling this way. I guess that's part of the reason I'm being open is because, obviously... A lot of other people go through stages where they feel the same way. If you do relapse, then instead of feeling so bad about it that it makes you feel worse, you just need to accept that it's happened, but you need to get yourself back on the right track. And that's never an easy thing because you can, you can fall so easily into that pit of, I don't want to help myself, I can't be helped. But just because you relapse, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get better still. It doesn't mean that there isn't going to be a light at the end of the tunnel because there always will be and I'm saying this as I'm still off work and I've just admitted to like suicidal thoughts and self-harm and stuff something I haven't done in like two weeks which may not sound like a lot to some people but to me especially given the mental state that I have been in two weeks is a long time and there have definitely been times when I've thought about wanting to do it there have been so many nights when I've you know have things that I could use to hurt myself and I've wanted to and I've luckily managed to stop myself and the thing is when people kind of see me on stream or they see me on Instagram or things you would never kind of think that that's what I was going through I could be sitting in my bed crying wanting to kill myself and I'll have a normal conversation with you like nothing is wrong so I think I love the moral of the story is you never know what anyone's going through like someone can seem so fine and they can seem to deal with things so well but behind closed doors, 
There are things that you may not know about them. You never know what's going through someone's mind. You never know how on the edge someone is. Just be kind, just be thoughtful. Just, just think things through. Like, don't always assume that because someone seems happy, they are because that's not always the case some people are just really good at hiding it and you never know what you're saying to someone how much it's going to affect them sometimes when people say nice things to you you don't you don't really realize how much that can actually make someone smile um sometimes just the littlest of comments or like the littlest nice little thing can actually make someone's entire day there have been times when i've been in a complete crisis and i've had such like a small message randomly from someone who didn't even know that i was going through what i was going through and it actually brought me away from the edge and people didn't even know that but it did you never know what battles people are fighting you never know how much something you say it can negatively impact someone or how much something you're saying can actually positively impact someone it is always it's always hard to reach out to people and be open with them that night where i wanted to overdose on my tablets i i had two thoughts in my mind there was number one that i i shouldn't tell anyone i should just like take the pills and die like to put it bluntly that's that's you know that's the main that was the main thought in my head but there was another thought in my head that was like, no, call, call someone. Call your mum. Tell her to come over so you've got someone to distract you. And that's a scary thing to do because it's the fear of feeling judged and feeling like, well, no, I don't want the help. I just want to die. But then I was like, well, if I don't call my mum and she finds me dead in my flat, whatever, how is she going to feel? Would she have rather me called her, even if it is 11, 12 o'clock at night, or would she rather find her daughter dead because she was, because she didn't want to ask for help? And I then started to feel really bad and I was like, okay, right, I should call my mum because I know that it would absolutely break her heart to know that I was even debating not calling her. That can work with anyone you know. They would much rather you ask them for help than attend your funeral. You may feel like a bother or that your people will think you're attention seeking or all of that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, your life is worth more than that. When you're in that mental state, that's quite a hard thought to grasp because you often, if you're in a mental state like that, you think it's better off that you're dead and it's better off that you don't bother people, but that's not true. And it was scary calling my mum up eventually and crying down the phone and saying, can you please come round? I was so full of anxiety. I felt like she was judging me. I felt like I shouldn't have done it. But at the end of the day, looking back now, I'm glad that I did. And I'm glad that I didn't take those tablets. You won't feel that way at first, you may feel of regret at first that you, do you that you actually called someone and you didn't just do it but in the long run you will eventually thank yourself that you didn't put yourself through that you'll feel almost proud of yourself i guess that you actually managed to put yourself first and your life first and it's okay to not be completely there i'm not always there as you know as i said before i have self-harmed a couple of times and obviously I've done that because I haven't had the confidence to just ask for help but there have been so many times that I have where I've thought about wanting to hurt myself and I've just called my friends and tried to distract myself and tried to push myself through it and I've managed to. It's those moments that you've got to look at and be proud of. Recovery is never just getting better like that. That's not going to happen unfortunately and it's unrealistic to think that that would be possible nothing is going to happen overnight you're not going to be able to be open all the time with everyone you're not going to be able to constantly distract yourself or immediately have good coping mechanisms that's not reasonable and you should never expect yourself to just be okay because that's that that's not how it works everything takes time accepting that it will take you time and it will take work and it won't be easy is very important. You shouldn't feel ashamed for not feeling okay. Getting help, whether it's talking to your friends, going to your GP, getting therapy, it's all very scary, but it it's worth it. Admitting that you are not okay is a good first step because 
the more you just try and convince yourself that you're fine it's fine you'll get over it you'll be fine you're you're probably not going to and some people do and you know if you can get over it that way very good to you but a lot of people can't and accepting that you have a problem and that you are not okay and that you need help is a good first step. Sorry this video has been a bit all over the place, my brain is a bit all over the place and I keep getting distracted and I can't decide what I want to talk about but I wanted to film something and I wanted to just be open and honest and kind of start getting the ball rolling with this series really and with that I am going to go because honestly I'm just rambling and my brain is just just a bit of a mess right now. It's okay not to feel okay. You don't have to have a reason for not feeling okay. Otherwise you're never gonna be able to get over things or heal or recover if you can't even accept your emotions and that you're struggling. Hopefully some of my next videos might be a little bit more structured. This was a bit of a mess, but it's a mess because I'm a mess. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> that's the um moral of the story everyone and yeah i'm no good at like outros so in a bit peace out <laughs>